All right. So the thing I hated uh, was the opening promo. Okay. Um, yeah, I will disagree I, I with you, say, but okay. We'll, we'll... I wouldn't say I hated it, the whole thing. Th- they finished really strong. Um, the angle at the end was great. But Punk coming out and essentially punking out Hangman um, felt like it was completely unnecessary. Um, I have no idea why he would do it. I, I got the sense that there was something going on behind the scenes that I didn't know about. And it turns out that there probably was because I read something later about that. Um, yeah, we, we can clue him in. I mean, Hangman yeah. had an article where he said he, he'll, he'll take – He'll take advice from from veterans, but he'll go his own way, how he feels or whatever. And, you know, I I just I retweeted it um, so people will know what I'm talking about when they listen. You can check my Twitter line. It'll be one of the first things up there. So, yeah. So essentially, you know, Punk had a line. So he sat down in the ring and he said, I got two things. I got some something real important and something unimportant. But let's get let's do the unimportant thing first. Hangman Page. And of course, they're in West Virginia. Hangman's home state. Hangman's and, not from West Virginia. Well, they say he is. No, they said he. Well, they said he was from nearby, and that's kind okay. of true. He's from a part of Virginia that's close to West Virginia. Okay, but, okay, but essentially, it was his backyard. It's like saying West Germany and East Germany are the same. Okay, well, <laughs> either way, they were playing it as if it was his home, his hometown. Yes. And and so he, so Punk says something unimportant. Hangman, and he's like. Uh, you know, he says, I, I, I owe you a rematch. Let's do it right now. And he sits down in the middle of the ring, puts the belt down and waits. And, and he's looking at his clock and he's, well, you know, Oh, he's not here. And then he says, you know what? You're what, how did he word it? He said, uh, your apology needs to be as a little bit of advice. Your needs, t- needs to be twice as, um, needs to be as loud as your disrespect. Right. He said, that's coward shit not coming out and answering my challenge. And at that point I'm thinking he better not be on this show. And if he, <laughs> and if he's not on the show, then punk did this knowing he's not on the show and wasn't going to answer him. So he's an asshole. And if he is on the show, then hangman is, is exactly what punk said he was. I have no idea what the point of this was, what they were hoping it proved. If this was punk going into business for himself, I think it might've just been punks going into a little bit of business for himself, but or is punk turning heel. Like, That's the other. Th- I thought I thought it was healing on this crowd quite a bit to the point. He was where trying he to, but be. they kept cheering him. Yeah, and and you know, well, that that's what happens when you tell your truth, so to speak. Except he kept saying, it. he kept saying, uh, "Tell me, stop me when I'm telling a lie. Stop me when I'm telling right. a lie." Right, and that he told a lot of lies. <laughs> like, that's kind of true too. Yeah, yeah. yeah when he said, "I'm going to talk about someone." <laughs> For near and dear to y'all's heart, I thought uh, necro butcher. Um. <laughs> well, he's he says okay, so he called Mox the third best guy in his group. That's a lie. Um, he said that he you're not a bad guy, but you're not the best. I'm the best. And he says you're hanging around with Eddie Kingston. Uh, he's the third well, best. Hold on, hold on. Ed- let, let, let's backtrack. He said he's the third best guy in both of his groups, or he in was. both of his groups, right? So he's talking about the Shield. You're right. Uh, which that one's debatable, but I would say he's probably second. Um, and, uh, although I'm sure he thinks he's first. I think you're taking this far too literally, Paul. Well, he's needling him for sure. Yes. But he's also lying okay. because any crowd, anyone in the crowd, not a single person in that crowd thinks that Mox is the third best person in his own group. All right. So if he says, stop me when I'm lying, they should have stopped him right there. Right. Is, is my point. The shield Fair. one, maybe. So then he says Kingston is the third best Eddie and the second best Kingston I've shared a locker room with. Right. So that's referring to Eddie Guerrero. Right. And as you pointed out, Eddie fought too. Yes. Which is, who is a MAGA, which right. I did not even go there. And then obviously Kingston, he's talking about Kofi. Right. And of course, that is not designed to get Eddie Kingston mad. That's designed to get the fans mad yes. in my opinion the aw fans who think he, punk is telling him that kofi kingston is better than eddie kingston <laughs> now i'm sure a lot of people share that opinion <laughs> but i doubt many aw fans do uh, well <laughs> wrestling yes promos no um <laughs> uh yeah who's a bigger star kofi in the real world yeah in in if Kofi you're an AW won at fan, WrestleMania. That's a 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> and you know what? If Kofi showed up in AEW, like they'd bow to him and, and everything yes. like that. Yes. But two months later, Eddie I, would be a bigger I, I star. I see your point is that he was making a case that for the fans to boo him and the fans would not go along with it. Yeah. Uh, but then at this point, like when he said the line about Eddie, the crowd started chanting for him. Right. CM Punk, CM Punk. So, and then he just kept going on and on. He said he's planning to defend his belt. He's looking forward to putting up his belt against Mox. Mox won't be the first John I've beaten in Chicago for a title, and he won't be the best either. So now he's calling Cena better than Mox. Mm -hmm. So not only is he pissing off the fans, he's bearing his own company. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on here, except I, he's... I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell okay. you what it is, is that okay. this is the CM Punk people want. They want yeah. pipe bomb CM Punk. Whether yeah. He's, but see, remember, he was saying that, uh, he, you know, he was telling these types of harsh truths then and was supposed to be a heel as well. But people cheered him. But the problem back then was people generally were yeah, souring people, on WWE. Yeah. And these AEW fans love this company. Yeah. And and Punk is burying the company indirectly. And yet they're cheering him anyways. And the funny thing is, it's funny that you point out that this is the punk we all wanted because I actually wrote in my notes at the very beginning when he first came out, he was like smiling and he's like, uh, he's pandering. And I wrote down, I actually, my exact words I wrote down was, I don't like this punk. <laughs> and then like within five minutes, I got the punk I wanted and I didn't like that one either. <laughs> but you know what? Like, I do like it. I would like it more if I actually felt the way he does about AEW or the way he appears to feel about AEW. This is to thine own self be true, though. This is what punk is. Punk is a guy who, who, who has a list of grudges and he holds on to them. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like the Polish do the Germans about world war two. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Let me ask you something, Jeff. Do you believe when punk did his pipe bomb promo, do yes. you believe that he believed almost everything he said? Yes. Do you believe that he believed everything he said here? No. Exactly. That's the problem. That's the problem right there. He's okay. trying to get a reaction no, now. That's, it's a fair, it's a fair yeah. analysis, but and I like this more than point. I did Moxley's. Oh my God. We get to Moxley now. So Mox comes in. Okay. His music starts. Punk says, Punk Oh, I got some him. time. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Punk clown. I mean, yeah, yeah. he's going to take his time. Down. I'm going to make snow, snow angels. angels. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mox just does his entrance yeah. through the crowd, you know. Um, so he shows up, he comes in. Uh, he says, He says, Look out, ladies and gentlemen, CM Punk is dropping pipe bombs. And I'm like, Dean Ambrose is cutting a promo right now. Yeah. That 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 was very Dean Ambrose. Yep. That was the yep. shaky foot thing. Yeah. Um, then he got into John Moxley. He says, uh -huh. "You're you're writing checks with your mouth that your body can't cash. In your mind, you're the best in wrestling in the world. You're not even the best in catering. This is the best. This is the real world, and that's just that a mic in your hand. Your words don't mean shit. The belt don't mean shit." Punk interrupts him and he says, "Since your belt," and then he he interrupts him and he says, "Your belt don't mean shit until I beat you," and he says, "I'm the heart and soul of this company." And it makes me sick to be called the inner champ. Punk says, go ahead and be the heart and soul. I'm the dollar and cents. <laughs> and Mox is like, you only came to AEW because you ran out of money. He says, you ran out of fighting spirit a long time ago. Prove me wrong. And you're not going to do shit. And then Punk says, I get into a fight with you, but you just bleed all over me. Uh, I'm it's, this is where I was getting into it. <laughs> like, you yeah, know. there was, there was a moment in there though, that, that, uh, that, Moxley either dropped his line or couldn't think of the line that he had and, and smelled of over scripting a little. Okay. And, and punk got into it a little bit and, and, and almost like almost ran down Mo almost ran Moxley out of the building when he was. Yeah. I'd, I'd say punk got the better of this. Um, well, it, well he started, he took the upper hand when Moxley couldn't think of anything. Yeah. And then Moxley finally recovered, which was nice. Look, I, I you're being harsher on this than I am because Again, well, all they, I, I will say that if they wouldn't, have, if he wouldn't have done the hangman stuff, I would have loved this. Okay. I thought the hangman stuff was completely unnecessary, did not add anything to this, unless it's cementing a heel turn. I just want talking smack 
people that don't like each other and fake fighting. That's all I want on my pro yeah, wrestling. And yeah, that's all yeah, this well, was. We, and I we loved sure it. got that. I loved, I loved the, the state, the staging of the pull apart was perfect because it didn't, yeah. qu- it wasn't that, Oh, I break free of six guys and jump over the other six guys and get to the guy. No, he, they could never get to each other. And that was yeah. great. Well, they did start off by slapping each other around and then, yes. and then they showed up immediately and broke it up, which, I uh, I had a question like later Punk in the show. It looked like Mox wanted Punk to open him up, and he didn't quite get there, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he ended up grabbing a chair, threw it in the ring, and then Punk sat in it instead of using it. That was great. <laughs> and then Mox uh, grabbed the belt and then threw it away. And uh, and then he walked up the ramp, and it looked like it was over, and Mox rushed the ring again, and they they finally broke it up, and, and that was that. And it was like yeah. 20 minutes, and uh, it was... It was Again, without the first like minute and a half of it, I, I it was awesome. But I just I really did not like the hangman stuff. Uh, yeah, other other than a little bit of over scripting, I had no real issue with it. Somebody meant, said to me on Twitter that what did like they they thought their their an- answer to this because I asked that question like wh- why would he do this, and I want to find out what his answer was because it was interesting. Oh, he thinks Hangman disrespected him by not accepting his challenge or even acknowledging it, which is a loud statement. So his apology needs to be as loud. So he was taking Punk's words at their face value. And to me, it just felt like one of these things where, you know, we're supposed to know what's going on, but we don't actually know. You know what I mean? Like they assume everyone read that article and knows Uh, what Punk is talking about. and, and, And Tony books for the bubble. We, we know that. So, and that's an issue and he shouldn't have done that. Um, Kevin Ely had a question for us. He goes, so Punk comes back to a hero's welcome, immediately talks trash on the three most other po- or three other most popular guys in the company and gets cheered. Will yeah. this become counterproductive? Oh, I was and, just going to read that. <laughs> and you just and, did. Okay. Uh, and, and you're under the impression, yes. Uh, um, yeah. I Well, if Punk is turning heel, then it's fine. Right. That uh, Yeah. I think that's not a bad caveat. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening. Um, because I don't think you can turn Mox the heel. Right. And, yeah. And, well, and okay. Um, it's going to be hard to turn punk, but this is the way to do it. And this gets back to MJF. I think he's going to be babyface when he comes back. And I think he's going to be leading FTR and Wardlow. I, let, let me ask you this. Do Mox and punk make it to all out? Well, this is a qu- question. Okay. So spoiler alert, they announced later in the show that uh, Moxie and punk are going to wrestle next week uh, for the, you know, to unify the titles. Um, do I? Th- yes. I do. I think that MJF is going to show up and screw up the match. And uh, I know they don't like doing their no contests, but you know, if it makes sense and if it builds to a pay-per-view match, I think it, there's a case to be made for doing it. And uh, I think next week we get the return of MJF and, oh, uh, do and they, you? okay. Yeah. And they do the rematch at the pay-per-view. I, uh, I saw it breaking match. down. I, I saw it breaking down as uh, with Blackpool combat club backing Moxley and possibly, the Wardlow FTR faction backing punk. Hmm. That's interesting. So you got two baby face stables or Wardlow and FTR turning heel. Um, a little tweener action on, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the new pinnacle, but, uh, I like your MJF thing more, but the, MJF what if, thing... what if, what if Wardlow and FTR come out seemingly to save punk and turn on him? I'd be fine with that too. Although yeah, I, and, I think, then... I think that that kills the Wardlow story. Uh, yeah, I think they killed it themselves with okay. Wardlow's world, but um, but <laughs> but uh, you know if MJF shows up and maybe part of his new contract is he's getting a world title match at the pay per view, so it's a three way, or perhaps it's just Punk and MJF. Maybe MJF shows up at the end of the match and attacks Punk, so so Punk actually wins the title from Mox. I don't want that to happen. Uh, but I also I think Moxley can't... Punk is big enough for the pay per view though, and I don't think you can get oh, bigger than that. It absolutely is, but they're doing it next week for free on TV. That's so... why I think it's going to be a no contest. Okay, and and that's fair. Um, and and maybe maybe they put them in a cage. Yeah, we get a know? stipulation out of it. Yeah, yeah, and that and that that's fine. You know, if you're doing a no contest two weeks before the pay per view to build to the pay per view, I'm totally fine. I'm, with I'm that. cool with that. Yeah, that's I don't cool need to see a finish fun. on TV. I really don't. I know some people don't like that, but. I'm not one of those people. Um, so yeah, uh, we we also had somebody thought uh, Peter Wilson on Twitter. You guys think TK thought no way we're going to top that Mox versus Punk segment. We have to do the match next week. 
No, I think no, that's what he had planned. Because, the time. because say what you will about Tony Khan, he d- he does plan out his main event yeah. programs pretty well. It is very odd, though, uh, what they're very doing. Very odd, I, but I think yeah. I think the explanation is it'll, there'll be no resolution. Yeah, and that's that's the only explanation, I think. All right, uh, we got highlights. Yeah, of, the money's in the unification of the belts. You exactly. So you, well, unless, you know, for whatever reason, they really think they need to pop a rating next week, and I think they will. Um, I can't imagine that show next week not doing at least a million viewers and like a point four, but um, I guess we'll see. 